Hello everyone, Dr. Beth here. Uh, I want to talk about fasting. There's many forms and I want to focus in on one form of fasting and that's called time restricted feeding. Um, and this simply means where you know you compress your um, hours of when you eat and then you fast for the remaining. Um, it's not about eating less, it's just about eating the appropriate amount of calories within a more condensed time period. And there's so many benefits to fasting. Many people, most people have probably heard about fasting and, and its potential for benefits. So I do want to speak about time restricted feeding um, and then kind of speak to something to be thoughtful about as a woman, especially those who are in their fertile years and they're still cycling. So time restricted feeding, I already spoke about what it is. What are the benefits? Uh, so many. So we see that, uh, yes, there's a huge metabolic um, opportunity when it comes to improvement here. Uh, we see that, you know, fasting insulin glucose at people's averages when it comes to our hemoglobin A1C um, are improved. Uh, if we allow time for our body to really rest and utilize um, the glucose that's in our um, bloodstream, then it can start going further into utilizing the storage of glucose, glycogen, uh, and uh, then eventually into ketosis. Some people can get into ketosis or break down ketones um, to break down your fat. We're also seeing that fasting is um, useful for the immune system or for cellular function. There's something called autophagy that happens and autophagy is, think of it like a vacuum cleaner where um, you're going through and you're vacuuming all of the debris and the dirt. Um, autophagy is going through and doing cellular cleanup. It's it's getting rid of all the uh, six dysfunction cells and uh, cellular dysfunction is a disaster. It leads to disease. And so um, autophagy is, is amazing. And we see generally autophagy really picking up in, in 17 plus hours of fasting. Um, and, you know, we also see that there's a lot of cardiovascular benefits um, when it comes to um, cholesterol. You know, we see that uh, fasting can improve our ratios when it comes to our uh, big fluffy HDL and um, our small uh, potential uh, plaque building LDL. Uh, and we also see obviously improvement in triglycerides as well because uh, the liver is managing glucose better um, and we see also blood pressure benefits we see that people have a decrease in blood pressure who are doing time restricted feeding so there's a lot of benefits there are people who um, uh, fasting is a no-no and let's talk about that i mean i'm here to tell you that we need to be individualistic um, there's nothing that's right for everyone um, in, in some aspects and so you know fasting if you are someone who is pregnant it's definitely a no if you're someone who has an eating disorder history definitely a no if you're someone who is really stressed and has known adrenal insufficiency or adrenal fatigue is another word for this it's a no don't fast longer than 13 hours um and so we've talked about those individuals you know if you're severely malnourished like fasting is in it for you so um, one thing I really want to speak on is um, men and women are different. And so uh, most studies that are done uh, when it comes to fasting uh, or, or most studies in general when it comes to research are done in men uh, and not in um, women who are of um, reproductive ability because again, there's concern um, you know, when it comes to studying individuals who may become pregnant or who are fertile and, and disrupting that fertility. And so not a lot of studies are done in women in fasting, but um, what we do know when it comes to us women who are still having cycles is there's a time to fast and there's a time not to fast. And so this form is a form of time restricted feeding, but it's particularly to your cycle. And so I call it cycle fasting. And so let's talk about when it's okay. So during menstruation, during your bleed, okay, 
uh, go ahead and fast. Like this is the time to fast, in fact. Um, so if you want to do 16 hours, do 16 hours. If you want to do a 24 hour fast, go for it. Do a 24 hour fast. Um, don't go straight into that. Have someone guide you. Uh, we want to um, work out our fasting muscle just as much as we want to prepare and build on our muscles in the gym. So you should be trained in how to do this appropriately. But, um, you know, during that first you know, phase of menstruation, go ahead and fast. Um, and then we're getting into when not to fast as a woman who has a cycle. Um, do not fast a week before your period. Um, we want to promote progesterone. Okay, progesterone is amazing. We need it. And um, fasting competes for progesterone. Um, progesterone is critical for um, making a big, juicy, thick uh, uh, endometrial lining. We need that if we want to have that egg um, get implanted and, and have a baby. And so we want to promote progesterone for that factor. We want progesterone. Progesterone helps us feel chill and cool and calm. Uh, and progesterone also is really critical for sleep. So don't disrupt progesterone. Do not fast any longer um, than we can say it's 13 hours, but I don't, I say don't fast longer than 12 hours um, a week before your period during that luteal phase, promote progesterone. Uh, and so uh, if we get more technical, um, there's three different types of kind of uh, time periods, day one through 10, um, go ahead and do all the fasting you want. Um, one through 10 your cycle that is, day 11 through 19, everyone's different with when they ovulate. So that's why we kind of go with a week before your um, period. Uh, so 11 through 19, um, you know, 15 hours. I wouldn't go much past that. Uh, and then that week before your period, day 19 to your period, um, whatever it is for you, don't fast. So um, fasting is amazing. Uh, one thing with fasting is like, please, you have to be hydrated. One of the biggest mistakes that my patients make is um, not drinking enough. And, and fasting is a natural diuretic. It actually gets rid of water and it gets rid of electrolytes. So making sure that you're well hydrated, at least half your body weight in ounces at minimum of the day. Um, and also um, go ahead and have, you know, electrolytes, make sure that your electrolytes are in balance. You're looking at a um, comprehensive metabolic panel. Um, most of my patients are doing some form of electrolytes, even if it's just uh, utilizing um, red and real salt or, or uh, pink Himalayan sea salt. Uh, electrolyte balance is critical um, if you are someone who's a faster. And so that is my foundation of talking to you about time restricted feeding, um, a few of the benefits and then specifically speaking to women who are um, cycling, how it's important to understand there's a time to fast and a time not to fast. Uh, excited to hear your guys' questions. I hope this was helpful. Until next time.